What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make chili quiles while motorcycle camping. Chili quiles. Chili quiles. Chili quiles. Chili quiles? <laughs> so this recipe is not um, a traditional chili quiles recipe. It will be very similar, but as y'all know, when we go motorcycle camping or just traveling on our bikes, room is very important. So therefore I've kind of dumbed down the ingredients here so that I don't have as many things to pack on the bike. And this recipe is absolutely delicious. I don't know why I don't make it more often. Well, actually I do because I typically travel alone <laughs> and it's a lot of work for just me to make it camp. I would much rather make this for at least two people if I was going to cook breakfast one morning. But when I do have the opportunity, I do like to make this chili kilo recipe. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So as far as uh, kitchenware goes, you are going to need some type of stove. I use a Jetboil Micromo for all of my stuff. This one actually still has coffee in it from earlier. Um, and then I just use the little stove topper that comes with it to add my skillet to. Uh, you can also use um, a, like an MSR one or whatever else you want, uh, but that works for me, it's very handy. You're gonna need some type of skillet. I use the Cedar Summit Alpha Pan 8 inch. There is a 10 inch option available. We'll get into that a little bit more later on in the video. Um, but this is the one that I carry with me since I typically only cook for myself, but today I am cooking for two people. As far as silverware and cookware goes, uh, you're going to need a fork to enjoy your meal at the end. Um, you're going to need a knife in order to cut a couple of ingredients. Uh, this one is off Amazon. I think I paid like 10 bucks for this and this is just like my little travel knife. This one does come with a little sheath, which is nice. So I just go ahead and put it in my little kitchen bag here whenever I'm traveling and it's good to go. Next, if you want to use a plate for anything, you can. I have these uh, GSI Outdoor stainless plates. I also have some of the Sea to Summit X series stuff. This is the X pot. There's also an X plate in here, but honestly, I kind of like to use these. They're a little easier to clean. They do take a little more space up, but anyway, there are options. <laughs> the last thing that y'all are gonna need in order to make this is of course a spatula. This is a little MSR spatula that folds out. It gets really, really tiny, which is nice for traveling. Of course, now I can't fold it back up. There y'all go. Very, very teeny little spatula. And lastly, you'll need some type of cutting board. This one I'm using is made by OXO and I picked it up at REI as well. So now that we've gone over all of the cookware, we'll go ahead and go into the ingredients. I've decided I was gonna make this a how-to video about halfway through cooking the meal. <laughs> so I don't have the ingredients to show y'all anymore, but you're going to need a red onion. You're gonna need enchilada sauce. You're gonna use eggs for this recipe. I like to put my eggs in these little egg holders. I got this one at REI, but I will link them um, down in the description below, as well as everything else I'm using in this video. Everything will be down in the video description. And chips. I would recommend if you go somewhere that has like chips and salsa the day before, if you were to cook this to just like get some to go while you're at the restaurant, cause then it just saves you four bucks. And like, unless you're gonna eat this whole bag or take this with you on the road, it's, it's a lot. You're going to need oil. I use olive oil and I put it in one of these little Nalgene two ounce containers. This was full before making this meal. So you'll use about an ounce of oil. You could probably get away with it and use a little less, um, but I did cook for two people. So take that into consideration. Next is gonna be your spices. I really like to use these little Nalgene's to carry mine. I also mix everything together. Some people don't do that. They like to have everything separated, but mine is just salt, pepper, and garlic. <laughs> yeah, and patience, because cooking at camp takes forever compared to at your house. <laughs> if you're not filming, this could probably take about 15, maybe 20 minutes to cook. Uh, if you're filming like I do, it takes an hour. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Jumping into the cooking directions here, first you're going to want to get your red onion diced up. I prefer mine to be diced down pretty small. Uh, it does help cook well, and I just like the way that it cooks into everything. Second, you're going to want to get a little bit of oil heated up in your pan, and then you'll want to add the onion shortly after. Uh, it doesn't take too long for the pan to heat up in my experience while camping. 
So getting the onion to caramelize takes the most time out of the whole cooking process, but make sure you get the onion stirred up in the oil if you want to. You can add some spices to it as it's cooking as well. So cooking at camp tends to work differently than cooking at home. Uh, you'll want to keep an eye on the onions and stir them a bit more often just to make sure nothing burns. Cheers! So, first step in making the chili quiles that I make is I just like to caramelize the red onion. I love red onion, so I probably overdo it. You really only need like half an onion for two people, but you can decide that on your own. I will never complain about there being a little too much onion in anything. Same with garlic. So since I usually always camp alone, I use the Sea to Summit 8 inch alpha pan. There is a 10 inch one available. Jet Boil makes some uh, lightweight pans as well. Um, but the eight inch has always done a really good job for me, just for me to cook for myself. Um, but cooking for someone else, this is, in my opinion, a little small. Um, so that's something to consider too, if you're kind of just watching this and you're like, oh look, camp kitchen gear. <laughs> it's kind of trial and error. You might find that an eight inch pan works well for what you need for two people, or maybe even you're one person and you want a 10 inch pan. There's no such thing as too many kitchen gadgets, especially when camping. So next you're gonna wanna add your enchilada sauce to the onion mixture in your skillet. I don't have a can opener or one of those like P1 million, whatever the little things are called to open the cans. So I just put a couple holes on the top of the knife. And so far, it's working out okay. A couple of things to note, I cooked this in two parts, so I only used about half the can in this shot here. Also, there's no specific measurements. This is all just kind of eyeballed. Once you get the onions and sauce together, you'll want to let it simmer for about a minute. Next step, we're going to just go ahead and put the chips right here in this little red sauce abyss. You want it to soak up all that enchilada sauce. Now you can do this with actual corn tortillas and like make them yourself, but it just adds an extra step in the process. And if you're trying to be a minimalist, it's just a lot of work. There's two different ways that you can cook the eggs. You can cook the eggs directly on top of your sauce and chip mixture, um, or you can fry the eggs and just place them on top. You can also add cheese if you want. Um, like I said, garlic. I brought an avocado to spice mine up a bit because I love avocado and this one was perfectly ripe yesterday at the grocery store. So I couldn't leave it behind. But yeah, uh, I think we'll try both ways just so you guys can see since I'm making this for two people currently and we'll see which one kind of turns out better. So the first method I'm gonna show y'all is the pan fry method. This ended up being the faster of the two methods to cook the eggs. All you're gonna do is take the chips and sauce mixture out of the pan and then cook your eggs and the yolks to your liking. So over easy, over medium, over hard, it's completely up to you. I had six eggs, so that was three per person, but if you want less, that's also perfectly fine. And here is a quick shot of the finished product. So method two is to just cook everything right into the pan itself. I saved some of the caramelized onions for this second batch and just threw them back in the pan along with some more enchilada sauce and then started to add the chips and eggs for it to all cook together. Can y'all hear that? Mm. So because there's so much in here that's gonna cook, I need the heat to stay on top so it'll cook the top of these eggs. I could do it this way, but it'll touch. I'm gonna kind of rig this up here and just leave it like that for, I don't know, a couple minutes and then I'll check on it. If you do this, just make sure that you don't fully grab it because it'll probably be pretty hot. <laughs> Again, try to not use your hands over for this. <laughs> oh, that looks so good, y'all. Look at how good that looks. Moto camping chili quiles. 
the most perfect avocado. Salts and peppers here. Without further ado, finally get to eat. That runny, runny. Oh my God. I killed it on these. They're so good. Clean plate crew. That's how you know it was good. Now the Sea to Summit pan is a nonstick pan. So there is not a single piece left in this pan. And even the bottom parts that got kind of crispy while I was cooking it all. Oh, this was so good. This was such an amazing breakfast. I would much rather cook this than go somewhere to eat. Oh, it was so good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little how-to cooking video. Let me know if there's a recipe or kind of food that you'd like to see me cook next time and I'll add it to the list. But until then, I'll see you all on the road. Later, y'all.